Having a bit of a trail side experiment today with two different mountain bikes. One of them, modern trail bike, nice and light, nice and responsive and agile. And the other one, as you can see, quite a lot heavier, um, quite a lot of kilos heavier. So this is an e-bike, but this is not in a video because it's an e-bike. This is representing a heavy bike only in this case. And I want to figure out actually, is a light bike all it's cracked up to be? Or can a heavy bike actually outperform a light bike on the same terrain? Let's find out, shall we? Okay, so let's have a little look at the bikes just so we can understand my thinking here. So this is a brand new Canyon Spectral. It's got 29 inch wheels, uh, they're carbon wheels, uh, something important to note in this case. And the whole bike weighs 13.8 kilos uh, without the water bottle on there. So it's a pretty lightweight bike considering the big wheels, uh, lots of suspension, and the fact it's a size extra large. Now consider the fact the frame is made from carbon fiber. So technically on paper, that makes the frame lighter. Now, there's a phenomenon known as unsprung mass and sprung mass. So you might have heard about this in the suspension world. Now, what this refers to is your sprung mass will be the main frame, or this could be like the body of a car, for example. Uh, in this case, obviously, it's the bike. And you've got your unsprung mass. So that's effectively the wheels at either end. Now, effectively, the lighter your unsprung mass is, the better that suspension is going to work. And also, the better your bike technically is going to handle. And the reason for this is lighter wheels are going to accelerate faster. Lighter wheels are going to decelerate faster, so you're going to be able to scrub off that speed much quicker without all that rolling momentum. Now, you'll definitely notice the difference between running 29 and 27 and a half inch wheels. 27 and a half will want to accelerate much quicker and they're way quicker to slow down, which is why it's vital with bigger wheel bikes to have lighter wheels, but also to make the suspension work really well. Now, in this day and age, everyone's getting obsessed with putting water bottles and stuff back on, on the mainframes which is fine, I don't have an issue with that. But a lot of viewers are questioning this, thinking like, oh, why, are you, you know, why do you want to do that when you're spending all this money on a nice lightweight bike? Why do you want to put the weight back on the frame? And actually, strapping a bit of weight to your main frame isn't a bad thing. So having a heavy water bottle on there, yeah, when you pick the bike up physically, it's going to be a bit heavier, sure. But you won't really notice that weight. If anything, it'll make it better because that's low center of gravity there. It can actually make the bike handle a bit better. Uh, and speaking of having a heavier main frame, that's exactly why we've got the e-bike here today. So, got the e-bike here behind me, right? Now, forget about the fact it's got a motor. That's not what this video is about. This is purely about the weight of the bike. Okay, so this is also a Canyon Spectral. This is a Spectral On, same size bike as my other one. The other bike weighs 13.8 kilos, give or take. This weighs 22 and a half kilos. So this is loads heavier. In fact, even the wheels are heavier. So the H1700 wheels are about 2000 grams for the set of wheels on it compared to uh, about 1700 grams actually for the wheels on the other Spectral. But the theory is because of the fact the frame is so much heavier on this because it's got a motor and it's got battery in it, the suspension should work much, much better regardless of the quality of the actual suspension units on there. It's all about the unsprung mass. So again, even though these wheels are actually heavier than what's on the other bike, the effect of the wheels compared to how heavy the main frame is, is gonna mean they're gonna track the ground very differently. Now you might've heard people talk about this on e-bikes previously, but uh, I wanna show you this, and I actually wanna feel this myself side by side on the same trails on the two different bikes. Okay, so there's no denying, can't get away from the feel of a lighter bike, however you get there, or stuff like this. You know, like I grew up riding BMX tracks and stuff and pulling and pushing the bike around, sticking the back wheel in. It feels fun on a lighter bike, on a heavier bike. 
I mean, it's not, not fun, put it that way, but it's way harder to move the thing around. And yeah, you can do it. I, I guess you would just dial into riding that heavier bike. Nothing to be afraid of riding a heavy bike. It's not the same as riding that lighter bike. To be honest, I find it hard that anything's gonna beat a nice light bike. Light bikes are everything to me. I mean, cross country bike is pretty much my favorite type of bike to ride because I love how light it is across ground. But of course, as soon as you point it into stuff where you're a bit more dynamic, forget the geometry here. The weight is where the things come unstuck. You're just skipping around all over the place. But uh, this bike feels great. I love this bike. But um, I'm curious about the heavy bike through stuff like this, especially for things like that compression, because you load the bike up and that, that weight is kinetic energy. It's got to go somewhere. So I'm convinced the heavy bike is going to feel better through there. That's for sure. Um, yeah, a little bit of traction. I mean, this place, the mud's really good, but of course there's loads of wet roots everywhere, which are slippy, whatever you hit them on. But something I've got to add, actually, so the tires on this, all right, so the two bikes are different specs regardless. So the other bike is from EMBN, so it has different tires, different specs. But the rubber on these tires is four compound, they're really soft, they're really grippy. But weirdly, I feel like I've not got as much grip, and I can't work out if it is the tires and the sort of the feeling of the wheels on the ground, or if it is the heavy bike factor. The wheels on e-bike are heavier. I'm running them at way higher pressure. So I'm running probably what, 26, 28 PSI on this at the moment. On e-bike is probably plus 30. So they shouldn't have as much grip, but that bike weirdly has loads of grip. It's a really strange feeling. So although jumping is not my favorite thing in the world, I'm pretty comfortable with it. And also I'm kind of good at sticking the bike to the ground. Now there's a little compression I've been riding a few times. I noticed on the, on the lighter bike going through there, the bike was skipping around a bit more, but I was able to sort of keep the bike a bit lower. But riding this, it felt more stable, but actually because of the sheer weight of the bike, I was bottoming out in the sort of G out and it's kicking me off the ground a bit more and I can't really suck it up any more than that. But it's, it's probably happened two or three times now where I've got caught offline, almost a bit dead sailor-ish, where I know on the lighter bike, it would have been a proper moment where you're like, oh, oh no, this is bad. But something about the heavier bike is really reassuring. It's just kind of like, oh, it's going to be all right because it's just going to touch down. I, actually, I'm kind of really sold on the heavier bike for that. There's a, that definitely proves in my eyes that a lighter bike isn't always the case because light bikes and stuff like that can feel terrifying. So straight away, there's a noticeable difference between light and heavy through there. The light bike is getting kicked offline more. That's nothing to do with how good the bike is or how well the suspension works, because it's really dialed in. It's just the fact it's a lighter bike, it's getting bounced. This just monster trucks through stuff more. But as a downside, when you hit stuff, like you've got the stability, but if you're a bit offline, it's way harder to move the bike around. So heavy bikes, as we imagine, they're nowhere near as agile, but they're way more stable. So actually, there's loads of good handling attributes to come with that. 
But let's not forget the most important thing on this right now is how well that suspension is tracking the ground. Firmer compound tires, firmer tire pressure, heavier wheels, and the suspension on this feels absolutely amazing. I guess you can't, but it's day and night different. In fact, if you've not got an e-bike, if nothing else, try an e-bike just to feel how good the suspension tracks the ground. It's, uh, it's almost a bit disappointing how good it is. Thing that's different is this is pretty set on the line what i'm noticing on the regular bike and i've got a suspension dialed on that for me it feels really good the bike's still skipping around because the suspension simply cannot react fast enough to all of these bumps you know if you set your suspension up on a regular bike to react to all these bumps after a while it's going to pack down whatever happens or it's going to buck you because you have to run it fast enough to recover between hits so it's not going to do its job that suspension this literally sticks to the ground. I feel like I can pick a line a bit more. But then the fact that the bike is heavy, I can't really move it around on the terrain. Okay, so I've been talking about how well everything works on this bike in particular. The suspension working really well because of the weight of the frame. The problem is, you still have to pedal things back up again. So we know for a fact a lighter bike is gonna be more enjoyable on the climbs. But just to prove a point, I'm gonna ride this up, obviously the motor off, just to see just how bad this is compared to something like that. Let's see if it can convince me if I'd wanna ride this without a motor on, shall we? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> All right, so this is a little bit excessive trying to ride this thing up here. First off, forget that this is a bike park. So this place is gravity biased. So yeah, all right. So you can forgive the weight of the bike going down, but no way for pedaling up. You cannot beat a lightweight bike for getting up the hills. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still hard work riding a trail bike uphill, but it's okay. It gets you loosened up, doesn't it? So what have we learned today then? Well, no question. I love a lighter bike. I like even lighter bikes than this. I love the way that they cover ground. But I'm pretty shocked at just how well the suspension works on the other bike I was riding. Now, of course, like I said earlier, it's nine kilos heavier. Like, it's ridiculous. So with that in mind, you know, you'd only ride a bike that heavy because it's an e-bike. So that wasn't really part of this video, but we can't shy away from the fact it's got a battery and a motor in it. So therefore it makes it acceptable to be that weight. There's no way you're gonna to wanna to ride a bike that heavy to get the suspension to work that well on, on regular trails. It's not gonna happen. So with that in mind, really the, the best way to do this on your own bike, if you wanna make the sorts of improvements to make your bike feel more stable where it counts, but also, feel more agile where it counts, i.e. under braking, when accelerating, in the air and things like that, is losing weight off your wheels. So don't go spending money on crazy carbon fiber handlebars or cranks and things that really don't matter, obviously look nice, but the biggest things you can do on your bike is strip some weight from the wheels. So yes, that might sound expensive to you, but there's a few ways that you can do this. The first one, of course, the expensive option is to save up and buy some lighter wheels. Second option, go tubeless if, you've, if you're not already. That can take, you know, two or 300 grams per wheel off, depending on what sort of options you already have in your setup. Lighter tires, that doesn't mean just going out and buying some, it means when your existing tires have worn out all the way through the casing, you're gonna be upgrading them anyway to a fresh set. So why not consider some lighter tires? Lighter tires are gonna make a massive difference. Don't forget, you're turning that weight around the whole time. So whatever you're doing, whether it's pedaling or reacting in the turn, you're gonna notice the weight front and rear. And let's not forget, the heavier those wheels are, the worse your suspension is gonna work. 
One last thing is your rear cassette. If you've got a modern cassette, 11 or 12 speed, and it's not a really expensive one, i.e. XT or XTR, for example, chances are it's gonna be really heavy because it's mostly made from steel. So, bearing in mind it's a consumable part, so it is gonna wear out sooner or later. Start saving a bit of money aside, so when it does wear out, you can buy one that weighs dramatically less. And I promise you, it will make a huge difference. Lighter wheels on your mountain bike make your bike feel great. Don't be too concerned with whatever your frame is. A heavier frame is not a problem. Heavy wheels, actually, that's gonna be the downfall of the handling on your bike. Um, and I think that's where I kind of am in this unscientific experiment today. But uh, I'm gonna get another lap in on both bikes and uh, see what else I think. But uh, let us know what you think in the comments underneath and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.